<laughs> okay. Yes, make it more professional. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Winter Camp series um, that Racing Magpie puts on. Today we have Patricia Withhorn. She is going to demonstrate um, ribbon skirts, making, sewing, the technique of that, and kind of talk a little bit about um, how it keeps her mind and busy. So um, we chose Ani is kind of the theme around this show and how her artwork is a tool to maintaining that well-being. Um, so we have Patricia Withhorn. She's an enrolled member of the Sissi Tuan in Wakpe Tuan tribe or Oyate. Um, she's Wabe tough or big coolie tough? Big coolie. Big coolie hey. tough. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to give a shout out. Um, I know it's Super Bowl. Everybody's busy, but this is a really good um, opportunity. We're going to, Trisha is going to just show us step by step how she makes her ribbon skirts. And this is part of Racing Magpie's Winter Camp series. Like I said, the model of Winter Camp takes from our ancestors' days. You know, during the winter time, it was you know, time for people to come um, stay inside, stay inside the teepee there and share stories, um, whether that be about culture, crafts, language, you know, just life's lessons. And we chose on as kind of what, like I said, what we thought for Patricia's. And with that, here she is, Patricia Whitmore. Thank you. Master Welcome. Ribbon Skirt thank Maker. You. Thank you, much, Kay. Thank you, Tally. Um, I just want to first off thank Racing Magpie for this opportunity to come share my um, uh, sewing skills. Uh, ribbon skirt making is one of my favorite mediums or modes to, to do when sewing. Um, I do, I've been sewing since I was 13 years old. Um, I was gifted my grandmother's sewing machine from my mother at a very young age. And uh, my mother would give me all of her old, uh, I think it was from the 80s or 70s, all her old, uh, they would host, uh, uh, pinnacle night with their friends, but she would go and uh, give me all of her old tablecloth linens and uh, uh, folded napkins out of cloth. They were so fancy, but she would say, here, use this, you know, and, you know, for fabric. And I would just cut away and make little doll clothes or, you know, try to make myself little shirts or skirts back, way back then. But uh, so I've been sewing for a great number of years. Um, I truly, truly enjoy it. Um, I do beading as well. I do um, uh, regalia making, um, I ribbon skirts, um, just anything that cultural uh, promotes cultural healing. Um, I myself, um, you know, through our historical trauma tribes, um, you know, uh, just issues with just life in general, but sewing has been my forte and just really my way to bring me out of that kind of um, dark place and just back into the light. And so I'm here to share that with each and every one of you, the skill and art of ribbon skirt making. So step-by-step um, -step process, um, I'll, just, I, I'll just verbally tell you the things that you will need. Um, the things that you will need first and foremost are a sewing machine. Um, this one is a Singer Fashion Mate, which um, I use now, uh, my Mashke Amy Sazu. Uh, thank you so much, um, loaned it to me. So we'll be using this today and it's a wonderful brand. Um, uh, an iron, um, I use Heat and Bond. Heat and Bond Light is actually a um, paper. Um, this is the logo there. It's the purple one you want to buy with the purple logo. They have different modes or um, different brands, but the red one, that you see at fabric stores is a no sew. So that red brand means that once you iron it to your fabric or to the ribbon, it's such a thick glue. It makes such a strong bond that when you try to sew it with your sewing machine, your needle will eventually either not sew through it or it will get stuck and break your needle. It will be very difficult. Um, to to utilize. So that's why I use the heat and bond light, the purple, the purple one. And as you can see, it's a paper that has um, a shiny side, which is the glue. 
so that when you're ironing your ribbons on, which is what I do, I. So Trisha, can, oh, yes. Um, where would they find this? Um, this is actually sold by the yard, or uh, it's available at like they sell it at Walmart. Um, by the yard, it's approximately dollar ninety seven a yard. Um, I. It, I utilize quite a lot of this because your ribbons, or you can get this either um, by the yard or in packages at Walmart in the fabric section. Um, they have five yard rolls for seven, eight dollars. Um, this is just my main, like I can't, I can't live without this stuff. Oh <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, without this heat and bond, um, this is what adheres, whether it's you're layering your fabric for applique, whether it's the ribbons, whether it's, um, you know, anything you want to stick, it, it's sticky on this side. Once once the heat activates the glue, you can hem your fabric. You could iron this to the bottom of the fabric panel and hem it up, iron it, and just stitch it so it's ready to go. So right. this is a very big time saver for me. So some people, they utilize pins when pinning the ribbon down, or um, some people use glue sticks, which is an also a great medium as well. But I prefer the heat and bond method just because uh, it's very easily washable still, and it maintains the shape of the the fabric, maintains its shape after you've washed and uh, it, you can you can dry it on a gentle low setting. Um, I and and it lasts for years. I have a skirt that she made me like seven years ago, and it still looks new. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. I do love it. Um, it's just. Heat and bond light. This is um, a skirt that I made in June this past summer. I whipped it up. Uh, it was my birthday actually for um, when Stephen Paul Judd came for our conference. But um, the heat and bond light, it just it actually helps hold your ribbons in place. So, like, let's say if I started this today and I wasn't able to finish it, I could iron the ribbons on in place and then set it down and then come back to it tomorrow and the ribbons would not move. Like, I don't have to worry about the ribbons being out of alignment or, you know, shifting. Um, some people do use pins and that's perfectly fine as well. But um, I myself, just just for the, the, the stickiness and that the ability to keep it from moving out of place. Um, ribbon alignment is a big um, factor when you're yeah. making your ribbon skirts. There's all kinds of patterns. Um, I just made one for, uh, a, a different method. I used kind of a uh, kind of a um, weaving technique that I just I saw did. That yes, nice. for um, one of my mosh gays at the round dance last night. She wore it in one best dress. Really? Yeah, and she purchased it from me. For it's a red with different pinks and um, Lynn Cooney. She's yeah. Amazing. So the viewers out there, um, you know, I think when when we think about ribbon skirt making or ribbon shirt making those are in the arts realm because you have to think about your color scheme you have to think about your design um you know you you really have to know your color theory so you know you don't have to go to school to learn all that stuff some of us have had the opportunity to learn that at school but um you know just keep those in mind too and not yeah there are are a lot of ribbon skirt makers out there and my hope one day would be like all the young ladies would know how to do a ribbon skirt you know um we we're kind of talking about this before the show about if you're an artist or a knowledge keeper or a culture bearer that it's important and vital nowadays that we share this knowledge because nowadays these kids have access to it and it would be easier for them and let's be honest all children native kids in the urban setting or the reservation setting they don't have access all the time to knowledge like this um sometimes we don't have people that are willing to share it but for even me as an artist the more indigenous artists that we have taking up space in events or in even the the art industry that's less of non-natives taking up that space that our people could be taking up. So that's kind of what I, I'm a beadwork artist and I want to get that knowledge out there. And, and we are, we're losing our elders. The pandemic has really hit our population. And so now our age people have to step up and kind of take that place. So 
really you then Racy Make Pie makes this opportunity available. So even if you miss this show or you can't listen for the full thing, they'll put it on YouTube and you guys will have access to that too. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thank yes. you so much. Yes, definitely. Um, this is just a dress I wanted to show. Um, this is a dress, I, uh, regalia, the women's northern traditional dress. Um, this is actually applique, which is the layering of different fabric colors on top of one another. And they're sewn um, together with a zigzag um, stitch to piece them all together to connect them. Um, heat and bond, like I said, just gives this just uh, vibrant, um, oh, I, I can't, uh, like a, uh, keeps the fabric kind of in some kind of shape, like a stiffness. There's a stiffness to it. But once you wash and dry it, it's very easily um, become soft and supple. So um, there's no worry in regards to messing it up or, you know, I know uh, fear can be one of our biggest uh, attributors to just not wanting to start something because we're afraid we're going to mess it up or we're afraid we're going to do this or that. But Honestly, it's through trial and error for myself that has gotten me to this stage of being able to say, I can make a skirt in two hours, or I can, you know, um, it's just that old re repetition of, you know, even like though you make memory. Yeah, well, it's just a repetition yeah. of even if you make a mistake, you pick up and keep going, you know, which is, which is, I think, one of our uh, as indigenous people, as um, I'm, I'm Dama Kota, but uh, as an assistant in Wapitan tribal member, I think that's in our blood, uh, that we have that ability to overcome and just um, the ability to keep going no matter what, what the issue or what the outcome. So um, just know that it's taken me a great many of years, number of years to get to this sewing ability, but it can be done, definitely. Um, practice. Yes, practice and just patience. So don't give up whatever stage you're at. Um, just begin, just start, you know. Um, and I'm sure that once you get, you know, the more you do it, the better you get, of course. So um, I'm excited because um, I know that many of our youth are starting to, to take over this mode of art and start creating. And oh, I just love this. Right. Beautiful. I love the, um, I love fabrics. There's all kinds of fabrics too nowadays. Um, I, a uh, quick shout out. Um, I get most of my fabric from either Walmart, Betty's Quiltery, um, the sewing shop in town. Um, you can order it online even nowadays, Spoonflower. Um, there's different uh, Teton trade cloth, different things like that. But um, there's so many modes of different fabrics from contemporary to um, horses to rainbows, unicorns. You can basically find pretty much any kind of fabric you look for nowadays. And I try to use more... Um, kind of contemporary. I do traditional work, but I do like today's option of contemporary styles and um, fabrics just just because um, we do have to keep up. With yeah. Time. So before you make a skirt or you do you automatically know what fabric you want to choose or do you go in there and just let the fabric speak to you and then create your design around that? I let the fabric speak to me. Trust me, honey. When you walk into the fabric store, mm. it's a, it's, it's, it's like walking it's, into a beat store. Yeah, Kevin. it's sensory. It's so visually so encompassing for the eyes. Um, we have to run our hand over the fabric to, you know, get the feel. And uh, but really, um, it, unless it's an order where somebody requests a special fabric, um, generally I try to use just whatever appeals to me at that time. Um, variety is the spice of life, and. Uh, I just enjoy all the fat different fabrics and whatnot. Um, there's sequin fabrics, there's velvet, there's satin, there's um, cotton poly. I generally, most of my skirts are made with um, cotton polyester blend um, at two yards. Two yards is exactly what we need for um, anyone between a waist size um, of a medium to a XXL, 2XL. I'm a 2X, I'm a 44 inch waist, but, um, I won't tell what I am, but uh, she knows. <laughs> but, a, but an XXL could stretch up to almost uh, 55 or, or So you more. can make that with the two yards yes. and so that yes. range of that sizes. Range. Yes, you could even do from a small, you know, it can be all the way from a size, you know, zero or, you know, um, all the way up to 55 inches. Three yards and more is um, above 55 inches. And I say three yards because um, all my skirts are cut on an A-line. So that, um, let me show you here. 
The A-line method is where you have a plain, um, a full piece. Yeah, we'll do this one here. Where you have um, a full piece, which is a rectangle, but then once you cut it, the shape comes out looking like the letter A. So it's, can you hold this side up there? So that when it's cut, it starts, your, your waistline is up here, which would be more fitted, but the A line allows for a slight grade outward, which leaves more room for your, um, for the bottom part, for your legs. Like um, I saw the meme the other day where they said, a um, ribbon skirt isn't a ribbon skirt unless you can jump a fence and run, or, you know, run fast or something, you know. But um, I do love the A-line because it gives so much more room at the bottom of your skirt. So like when you're round dancing, like last you night, room, or, yeah, yeah you have more room to, to walk and do things like that. Um, it's not so tight fitted. So that now. Um, running after toddlers, after yes, toddlers. definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, um, so I, I just want to start by showing the basic measurement that you'll need to get your own measurements um, when starting a ribbon skirt. So that um, what I do is- So where do you measure, like right on the waist or? Um, I actually measure from the hips area or the widest part of the person because you're gonna want the elastic, like although it is elastic, you're gonna want it to be able to, to co come over the, the, the widest part. Mm -hmm. And I myself, um, yeah, so I measure, yep. so I measure around my hips. And as you can see, it's a 44. So that I know um, when I when you have your skirt, your waist measurement, you're going to divide that into half. So 44 divided by half is 22. So when you when I, I basically you're dividing it into four because so you're going to have your two yards of fabric. Let's show you here. Let's say this is the two yards here. Let me get it here. And then, so you'll have your, it'll be a full rectangle though, let's say. Your full rectangle, or I can show you maybe on, on one of these, let's see. Just to, just to really give them the full, the full effect, yes. Ooh, that's pretty. Yes, this is a contemporary fabric I got just at Walmart. It's so cute, it's little unicorns. With eyelashes. Yes, with eyelashes. And so I love fabrics nowadays. They're so contemporary. So when you buy your two yards, it's, yes. it's like this. Yes, it's a big, long piece. And then what I always do is I double it so that it's um, folded exactly in half. So you have your two yards here. And this is the, um, um, oh gosh, this is the fold. They call this the fold line, where the fabric is folded in half. And this end is called, um, oh gosh, I'm losing all my sewing words now. But um, basically this is the end of the fabric out here. So it's doubled. So you're, this is how I cut the fabric. It's two yards exactly. So the fabric- So when you cut the fabric, do you cut from the, this, yep, this on, top on the fold? fold. Yes, okay. you're gonna cut on the top So if, you, if you're trying to cut your fabric when it has these, these ends where it was cut at the fabric store, Flip it. Yes, flip it. Um, so you're gonna, you want your fold for the fabric to be at the top so that your fabric is gonna go ver uh, vertically this way. Your skirt will go this way. Mm -hmm. So then what I do to cut the fabric, I put, we'll put the fabric on the fold here or on the mat, on the cutting mat. I have a- um, so Your basics really, once you wanna get started are a mat. Yep, cutting mat, um, a nice ruler, quilting ruler that I use. This helps ensure that when you do your A line, it's a straight line all the way down. Uh, believe it or not, straight lines make all the difference. Mm -hmm. It leaves a crisp, just a nice crisp, um, a, a, just a cleaner finish, a cleaner look, mm -hmm. so that when you wear your skirt, it's just a clean A line finish and just leaves for a crisper, crisper look. And these stuff, are, they're not too expensive, are they? No, no, these are, um, I think Joanne's has these for like twelve dollars. Mm -hmm. They're not too bad. Some and look for sale prices. Yeah, you know, budget, budget fashionista. But um, so forty-four inch waist. So we're gonna divide that into four. So our first, we're gonna do half, which is twenty-two. 
So then half of 22, because your fabric is folded, you're gonna to wanna to do half of 22. So then we're gonna add one inch for the seam allowance. So half of 22 is 11, 11 plus one Are is you quizzing? 12. <laughs> I know, right? Making sure she's up on her skills. Um, so we're gonna cut it at 12. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 inches right here. So when people when people try to, I know there's people out there, the linear thinkers. Oh yes. Where oh art doesn't involve art involves a lot of math. Yes. Even when even when it comes to painting, beadwork, quill work, sewing. Yes. So um I marked, I'm gonna cut it at the 12. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve inches because it's 11 plus the one for our seam allowance. And yeah. then for those people who don't know, what is a seam allowance? A seam allowance is the gap between where you stitch your line and the outer edge of the fabric. So the seam allowance is what you always want to leave because in case um, it adds that fortified um, hem or um, gap to where you know you're sewing isn't going to, because you can't just sew it right at the edge because it's just going to fall apart. Yeah. So the seam allowance keeps your item from, from like the wear and tear. Right, from the wear and tear. It adds just an extra supply of uh, fortification. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. So right. it's always important. And I use um, quarter inch, half inch seam allowance, mm -hmm. but um, here it's an inch. So um, 12 inches. And then when you do the A line, you're going to want to cut it more of a 45 degree angle. But depending on the size of your fabric, you're gonna wanna just, I angle it to the bottom of the skirt toward, cause you're gonna wanna line up that A line with this bottom corner all the way to your, your um, 12 inch line. So you just, and do the best you can. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, but straight lines. Yes, yeah, straight <laughs> lines, you know, do account for the crispness of the fabric. And remember, you know, this has, Pierce has perfected her art over years and yes. years. So like she said before, if you just now starting, perseverance. Yes. Keep going. And you know, expect mistakes when you're learning. Yes, definitely. And uh, I use a pencil even if I have to. Um, I have a quilting uh, a rotary cutter today. But if you have to, use a pencil or a pen and just mark the line. You know, you if you don't have, scissors, yeah, you can but... cut it with scissors if you don't have a quilting a ruler. Um, be very careful with the rotary cutter, though. These, uh, yeah. I have found, are very dangerous. Can be very dangerous. Um, scissors work pretty good, oh, yes, too. Yes, yeah. definitely, definitely. Um, this is just faster. Yeah, this is just faster, just for time uh, time purposes. But so you're going to cut your, uh, use your, open your rotary cutter, and we're going to cut it um, approximately on the 45 degree angle. And I'm going to push separate, and then we're gonna move our fabric down. And you're gonna realign your, yep, we're gonna line up, make sure everything is nice and flat. And I love these clear quilting rulers because you can always find your line again. So you're gonna move your ruler down and just follow all the way. See, I have, it's hard to see, I know, but so you have, part of your ruler lined up with the cut line, and then you just follow it all the way down toward the edge of the bottom of your skirt. And it doesn't have to be exactly to the corner. It's okay if you leave a little bit of a rectangular um, part at the bottom because you're just gonna sew it in. It'll fall into a beautiful A-line once you sew it with your um, seam allowance. So we're just gonna touch it. Yep, yeah, and I'm one more. All the way to the bottom here. Okay, line up your ruler on the, it's an approximate 45 degree angle and you can always adjust it as needed. So if you're doing like little little girl skirts, then yes. what, how is that, would that still be two yards? Um, no, little, it depends on like, you, um, little girl skirts take much less fabric. Um, I would the say, babies. yeah, the babies, um, depending on the measurement, um, you can gauge it. Um, Anything below, uh, let's see, I would say like a, a toddler, like a, a lot of my fabric scraps even go for um, toddlers or smaller skirts. It just depends on um, 
the measurement of the person that you're making the skirt for. But you know, fabric is um, luckily not too expensive nowadays, depending on where you go. But um, pl play around with it, you know. Um, I love trial and error, you know. Um, a lot of mine was trial and error. Um, so this this is going to show you the A line here, as you can see. This is just half of a, of the skirt. So right now, this top part is still the fold is still closed. What I say closed. So I'm gonna um, use my scissors and cut it open because then we're gonna open it all the way up and it's gonna be our, our skirt panel. Mm -hmm. It'll be one panel, yes. Well, you can start on that, I'll just- Okay. Did I forget the scissors? I don't know if that one is. Well, we can just use the rotary cutter and open it up, yep. Let me open it up and I can show them. So that would be can you make a little first to go through? Well, well, no, what it is is so I didn't explain this. Oh, I'll get okay. to that. Let me I'll get to that. Let's so just leave that here. Just leave that there, please. Yes. Leave the yes. Okay. Yes. Hey. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna catch your knee. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've separated our two skirt panels now. And that once you open it up, you can see the A line, the beautiful A line. And this is it goes from side to side there. So you do have room for your for your um, hem, you know, for your sewing when you're sewing. And this is long. Like this must have been a, well, oh, maybe a sixty inch wide or more. But um, so you can always tailor the bottom too. You could always cut it however long your length is. So um, ribbon skirts, it's totally up to you how long you want them. You're gonna put your tape measure up here at the hip, and you're gonna measure down however far. You want your skirt to be however oh, yeah, long or short. Yes. Yes. Ones are, yes. So the, yeah, they're very nice. Um, mine I'm gonna say is about a 30, 32. I'm well short piece of problem, but no. <laughs> very short. So that you could cut um measure your skirt to the length you want and then cut it straight across as well. So then you would just cut it and make it the length you want. And uh, rotary cutters for me are just so much easier. Um, I'm thankful I have quilter friends. But remember, it's not a pizza cutter. <laughs> it oh. can be a pizza cutter. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is the other rule. Fabric sewing rule 101. You're so the mean. rule, the number one rule is fabric scissors are only for fabric. Um, I have a 13 year old son who thinks otherwise. And yeah. when uh, I had to go to the fabric store and get new scissors the other day, because he was trying to use my uh, good sewing scissors as a, um, pliers to open his little something. And I, was, oh, I went to cut and it was just, it wouldn't even cut. I was not very happy, but luckily they're not too expensive scissors nowadays. My daughter does that too. She tries to grab my feet and says, oh, 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 oh. yes, yes. <laughs> so this is one panel of the skirt. I cut it shorter so that is she shorter? Yeah, I'm shorter. But it's still whatever you like. Okay, so if you're making a skirt for like a really tall um lady, would you get uh, like more yards? You could. Uh, it really depends on your on the the bolt. Oh, okay. uh, bolts. Uh, or what the fabric? Come uh, what the fabric come on? What they're wrapped on? So depending on that bolt width or length, it's either forty five or sixty inch wide fabric. So okay. based on the width of the fabric itself is how you're going to be able to know your measurement or get yeah. your measurements too. So, but um, you can always add pieces on to um, fabric is very malleable. I mean, you know, um, it's just about sewing. Well, it's Sunday morning. Why are you using big words with me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just <laughs> still on cloud nine from brown dance. I'm telling you. There was a round dance in town um, last night. So, and that you know that's what's really cool about the the urban population in cities too is like all the organizations get together and and have these cultural events. Yesterday there there was an artist market here and then the round dance. Yes, it was an, an amazing night. Just I I feel like uh, for our indigenous people, anytime we can utilize our own culture or our cultural practices, whether it's sewing, beading, singing um anything whether even just praying smudging azalea even just the methods uh, of of utilizing what our ancestors did many years ago gives us that pride and also that 
um, in, in fulfillment that we, we don't know, we might, we might not know we're lacking it, but I feel like once you find that uh, feeling, it's just, you, it can keep you going just wherever you've got to go. So that um, it can really give you a sense of pride, a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's really all about love and um, finding our, our cultural roots, finding out who, who we were, who our ancestors were, and knowing our ancestors are still with us even today yes. as we're doing this. So um, I do want to also explain. So once you cut your fabric on the A line, you are left with a scrap, which looks like this. It's the, um, I, and I want to show because this is the scrap you're going to use for your pockets oh. for the skirt so that it the a that's line, probably for more advanced sores or do you think or do you think beginners would... beginners could do it too I mean, okay. pockets? No, yeah. kind of... no no pockets are the the all the rage now it's they're okay. easy to whip up so this scrap here um this is actually we're going to flip it upside down this is going to be the pocket here where your hand goes in here and then it's wider at the bottom so that you could fit a phone or whatever you want but you're just gonna cut it. And I measure mine, I cut mine at about the, let's see here. Sometimes the folds of the fabric just tell you too. So this one is, I'm gonna cut it, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Oh, we'll do 11, 11 inch with the seam allowance. So I'm gonna cut it at 11 inches. And then it gives you the piece that looks like this. And then you're going to cut this in half. So then it gives you your pocket. Okay. Your hand will go in there and then we're going to stitch it around and make a pocket out of that. So we're going to cut it one more time. And this line is there, the fold from the fabric itself. And there you go. That's a perfect piece you need for your pocket. Okay. Yes. It's semi, no, it's not a rectangle really, but well. No. So the fabric gives you everything you need for one ribbon skirt. And then these I also use, I save the scraps for um, scrunchies. You can make, you know, little scrunchies out of them too. But I always save all my scraps. You should see my bins at home. I have an overflow, um, but I love to sew. So I use my, my everything. Okay, so we'll put these over there because this is just a sample to cut. So now we have our cut pieces for our skirt. So this is a cheetah or leopard print fabric I got. Uh, I believe it was at Michael's or I mean Hobby Lobby. Um, this A-line, as you can see, I'm gonna hold it up and it flares out at the bottom, toward the bottom of the skirt so that you get a better uh, fit for you know walking, it's not so tight. So now I'm gonna show you the steps to add the ribbons to the skirt. Ribbons, um, you can purchase um, by the spool. Um, they're sold at many different places, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Joann's. Um, they're a little bit more expensive. Um, I think at I think at Walmart they're a dollar oh no, $2.97 per spool. Um, each spool is 12 feet. So for me to use for one row on front and back, plus the little fringes, is three spools per color. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so it's it can be very pricey. So I, in the beginning, I started using these spools, but it just became way too expensive for myself. So then um, you, I went online and researched 50-yard um, spools. And you can go on Etsy. There's so many places to get 50-yard spools. Of, uh, this is two and a half inch ribbon. Mm -hmm. Oh no, one and a half inch ribbon, I'm sorry. One and a half inch ribbon. Um, I go to Etsy. There's um, different places on Etsy you can go. Um, you can go to eBay, search up 50 yard spools yeah. of ribbon. Um, this ribbon is... Or just even ask around or um, there's anybody out there that knows like inexpensive places. Oh, yes. To buy bulk ribbon. Yes. Um, I like to buy bulk just because I love uh, varieties and spice of life. I love all the color options. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you go to Walmart and they're sold out of a certain color. So then you have to wait until they restock, which can be a bummer too. Um, but uh, I grew up in LA, Los Angeles, so uh, I have connections to kind of the downtown fabric mart as well. Shout Excellent out. fabric. Yes, yes, yes. Look There's just so much variety. Yes, yes. Um, ribbon skirts nowadays, um, 
you know, fabric and ribbon are just the tools um, that we utilize to create our beauty, um, to remind us of our beauty. Um, being indigenous, we have to remember that our ancestors fought for us to have this way of life so that it is up to us to keep that going, to continue that fight, to maintain our way of life nowadays, our culture, our ceremonies. And this just is part of it. So that um, I'm excited. This is gonna be awesome. So that the ribbons, um, now that we have our fabric cut, we'll start to add the ribbons. Um, the heat and bond, I do have some pieces here that I've already added the ribbon to, just for shortcut of time purposes. Can you kind of tell real quick how, so how you get to it, so you lay your- Yes, your okay. Yes, let me, let me, I'll, I'll explain, yes. Yeah. So what I do for the heat, but oh yes, um, there's sewing adhesive in this uh, spray, basting adhesive. You can also use this to adhere uh, ribbons to your skirt. Although I do find it a little bit more difficult to use just because it really gums up the needle when you sew through the, through the adhesive. Insider secrets right there. Yes, so that what you do is- um, um, What you like, I, I'm, a, I'm not a sewer really, but so can, is that, hard on your machine if your needle gets all comfortable? Your machine is eventually, if you don't, okay, so I'm going to give you a secret. This is top secret. Our top secret, yes, everybody. Top secret, secret. But, if you're not joining live, you're missing out. Yes, I'm excited to share this with you. Um, They have this little tiny bottle. They used to sell it at Walmart, but I, I haven't seen it at any moment for a number of years. Um, If you live in um South Dakota, they do sell it Um. In Chamberlain at the quilt shop in yeah, Chamberlain. The quilt shop yes. Beads there. yes, they're beautiful there. Yes, I, these companies were named yes. and should be sending. Yes, she I, I she uh carries yeah, this. Tiny. It's a tiny white bottle, a clear bottle of sewer's aid, and it's for smooth hand sewing. This is just a lubricant that I place every few stitches on my needle. And this ensures that the adhesive from whether it's spray adhesive, whether it's the heat and bond. This keeps um, that your needle from the glue getting gunky on your needle. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't put some of this over time, it can break your machine. Yep. Your machine like um, will eventually just, the needle will go down and it will get stuck. And it won't, it, the motor, it just, it won't, um, it won't sew. Mm -hmm. So Sewer's Aid is my best friend. That's your top secret yep. uh, for today. I love this stuff. I cannot live without this. Um, this ensures that uh, it gives just a cleaner uh, when you're a stitch, when it helps the, the stitches stay together. Uh -huh. uh, it keeps the glue from getting stuck on your needle. I use a little Q-tip and just put a little bit every few stitches on. And you'll be able to tell because you can see that the glue is uh, clear and you can see little balls of it getting stuck to the back of your needle um, over time so that you just get a Q-tip, put some on there and rub it. It comes right off. The glue comes right off. So oh, secret. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm happy to share that though. Um, sewing is just such a good outlet for any issue, any anything, whether it's stress, whether it's just to um this is my go-to whenever my son, I have a 13-year-old teenager. He's 13. Oh, I do too. He's Not 13 going on 30. And he's just, you know, mm -hmm. at that age where he wants to just be 30 years old. And mom, I think I can drive. Mom, I need to get a job. Mom, I want a girlfriend, you know, all these things, but so this has really helped keep my um, sanity. Yes, yeah. sanity. <laughs> yes, keep kept my sanity. So um, sewing is just oh, everything to me. I just I can't be without it. So that um, now I'll show you how we um, put the ribbons onto the heat and bond. And the best tip I can give you first, so that once you have your, it's a step by step process. So the first thing I do is take the measurement. The second thing I do is cut our fabric. The third thing I do is however many ribbons you're going to, the third step is to cut your heat and bond to the same width of your fabric. So that, um, yep, you're going to line up the edge to the edge of the skirt here. The edge of, how, uh, we're going to do, a, this skirt will be a full stack. So that we're going to start the ribbons closer to the bottom and have them go all the way up to the top. So that we're going to start the heat and bond. So a full stack means like not just ribbons at the bottom, but all the way. Up. Yes, okay. like at least 13 different colors in one. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that for me, I the variety is the spice of life. I just love the different color variations. And so this, I want to have a lot of color. Mm -hmm. Just so that way you can work with any kind of shirt. or Yeah, you know, match with everything. Yeah, match with everything. 
So we're gonna, um, you're gonna roll out your heat and bond light, and then we're gonna hold. So then, when you hit your, when you cut your heat and bond, you want the this side up, the textured part. Oh yeah, up. the shiny side up, because then you're gonna fold it in half. You're gonna match it up with the seam of your skirt, and then you're gonna roll it out, and then you're gonna cut it. Okay. So this is one piece you're gonna use for your ribbons. So then, if it's a full stack, you're gonna want to do. However far it ended at, you're going to pull your skirt piece down and you're going to lay another piece of this out, which will be for the top panel. So you're going to, okay. so you're going to have two pieces with ribbon for a full stack. So you're going to roll up. This one will be shorter, though, because of the A-line cut mm -hmm. so that uh, you'll use less ribbons for okay. the top of the skirt because of, it's a shorter distance to the seam. So then you'll cut this piece, and this is your top piece. And you don't cut the heat and bond at an A-line to keep it straight. Yes, I keep it okay. straight, yes. Um, just because that way, I mean, you could cut it at the A-line, but just for myself, I feel uh, it's better to have too much. If you make a mistake, then you, it, it's worse to have too little. Yeah. Because if you make a mistake, you, at least you'll have extra. You know? Yes, so then you're going to iron the ribbon bond to the heat and bond light. And I'll do a quick demo for that. Um, Here, I can do it. Yeah, it's on. I think it's on. Let's do it. Oh, you got a new iron. Yes, I had to. Um, iron. Uh, my the iron is our best friend too with heat and bond. Heat and bond. Um, yeah, it's on. Okay. And I keep the setting at medium high, um, just because the heat and bond light can withstand heat. It can really withstand a lot of heat. That's right. Yeah, right this way, huh? Yep. I'm Herbana White today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The assistant. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna pretend this is our measured piece for the. You no, know and I think um, I think like in retrospect, all my daughters are young adults now, and I wish just being you know a parent or wanting to create that bond. You know, this is like a bonding experience too. You know. Yes, definitely. Teaching our youth um, part of our, our parts of our culture. Um, Especially really when they're really going through, they're yes. going through it. You know, things yes. are out of hand and they're this really helped. Yeah, Trisha used to work for our uh, suicide, a youth suicide prevention um, program too. And I, like, to me, working with, I, I was, a, those of you who don't know me, I was a teacher on my reservation for about 20 years too. And, um, some do, when you're teaching kids, this kind of helps helps them, you yes. know, they problem solve and yes. and figure out that okay, how can I apply this to what's going on in my like things are rough and it's going hard and and in the my life or their life or in the outside world. But when you start doing this and kind of create that, like somebody cares, right? Exactly. You know? Yes. Taking the time to teach them how to yes. do something as important like this, you yes. know, because not everybody can afford ribbon skirts. Right. Not everybody can afford ribbon skirts to make their kids. But if we teach our youth how to do this, they can do it for themselves. They don't, you know. Yes. That's um, cool. That's what cool. You yes. Know? It's more than just a gift of um, uh, of just a gift of our traditions. It's uh, mental, mental health as well, because. Uh, for me, sewing is just my peace. Sewing is my moment of, uh, it takes everything I compartmentalize and it just says, boom. And it just lets it just be kind of free floating mm -hmm. where I can take my time. I, there's no rush. Um, there's so many color visually. It's very enhancing. Um, just the feel of the satin ribbon alone. It's soft, it's shiny. Um, and just knowing that you can create something with your own two hands is more immense than you will know. Um, so let your child, you know, if they want to say, mom, I want to make a ribbon skirt, you know. Um, um, like don't, they can come up with their own color variations. And right, right. Let them use their creativity right. too, because it's theirs, right? Right, but but allow them that, you know, why not give them, give them the gift of just trying to create something on their own. Um, it's very, very mentally um, satisfying, very peaceful, um, very just everything that um, the world is not, you know. Um, 
the world is very fast paced. Everything is so internet savvy. It, um, just, you know, Tesla's, even the cars are becoming more, you know, robotic. And uh, so that this gives us our time to really just be at peace, to create something visually, you know, uh, culturally and visually um, soothing, I say to ourselves. Um, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to show the method for each piece of heat and bond that you're using for the ribbon panels. I always, I do front and back. So you'll need two cuts of ribbon, however the, the long, the length is for the bottom or the top. But I lay the two colors on top of each other so that I know, can they see that? Okay. So that I know one is for the front and one is for the back. Okay. Yep. So that it's, I yep. try to compartmentalize it all mm -hmm. it at once. So then you don't have a piece over here and a piece over yeah. there. Because me, I'd be like forgetting, oh shoot, where'd that piece go? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, can be um, daunting as well. But I do front, back, front, back, front, back. So you'll do this all the way, however many colors of ribbons. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll iron it on. Yep. And then um, I use, a, this is medium, a medium, high. yeah, medium high. Uh, the heat and bond light can withstand high heat. So don't worry about burning the paper. It's meant to, to take the heat. Um, but for this purpose, you're going to do tiny side up and then lay all of your ribbons down as close together as you can with no spaces because some people don't like the heat and bond because the, the adhesive will get on that iron and they say, oh, it just gets a mess and this and that. But uh, the iron can always be cleaned. You put a little bit of salt and get a newspaper, ball up a newspaper. Really? Yes. And um, brush it and the glue comes right off. Okay. So that's another. Another inside <laughs> tip. All kinds of inside I tips. I've learned here. much through my years of trial and error through sewing. So that um, we're just going to press down with our iron and we're going to just slowly move it slowly move it back and forth over the ribbons as many years as i've been mosh case with trisha you think i would know everybody asked me that oh you you don't trisha didn't teach you how to make <laughs> <I don't> ribbons. <laughs> well now we can say no anything. i just i i'm sure she would have but i just i don't know sewing I don't i'm know. a beadwork artist and sewing but like with trisha sewing is is her medium is what keeps her in in a good uh, we chose on any state if you will you know whereas beadwork with me is it's easy for me but like even I think with all us art especially cultural arts it just takes years of of getting back up after you've made a mistake you know that perseverance and and then when you see your final product like if I look back at years and years ago of my beadwork like oh my god I was just Ushika but you know that's part of learning yeah. you know um just so don't process. give up if you're learning yes. this or if you're teaching the youth you know that's part of teaching them we too speak. is yeah. our our perseverance you know yes that's innate that's in our blood our mm -hmm. ancestors were fighters and that uh even though we make a mistake we just get pick ourselves back up and keep going that's what our ancestors There's, did yeah. i'm just so i i just that's one of my biggest uh sewing has been my biggest ability to help me pick myself up and keep going. Um, it's even though you make a mistake, you know, uh, it can be overlooked as far as if it's sewing or beating, you know, some people uh, with my beating, if it's, you know, a big mistake, I have to st stitch, rip it, take it out. Uh, I know I didn't have to do that the other day. I didn't did like, I, I was making a set of earrings and um, I always have a donkey and a unicorn. So my first <laughs> one's my donkey. And my second one's always my unicorn. So I had to go and rip apart my bee work. And I was just, just broke my heart. Uh, uh. Okay. So we've ironed these three pieces down onto our heat and bomb light. And then um, you will have the whole paper full. Um, so then it turns out like these ones, right? Yeah. Yep. So then it comes out, you'll have your whole, this is the bottom, this is the bottom part of the skirt. Yep. So, so then gonna, do you take these, do they have to like um, pull off? Um, they don't have to. The glue is, is quickly adhered to the ribbon. Um, I do let it cool just for a moment because I use high heat and I'm always yeah. in a hurry. 
So and these are the colors for this. Yes. Okay. Yes. These Ooh. are the colors I love it. I love it. And you can so, choose any colors you like. It's yeah. there's no uh, preference for if it's, it's just your design. Yeah. Your design, your choice, whatever you're feeling, however you want it to look is totally up to you. Um, I just like I said, I, I love a lot of color. Um, anything with lots of color um, just is very appeasing to me visually. And so, then this, since this is short. This, yeah, that, this, this one, is the top. Yeah, stage. that's the oh, top half. Yeah, see, I'm learning. Yeah, see, mm -hmm. so it, the edges go out like this. So this is oh, your full okay. stack. So they'll go on. And then we'll go on top of here. Yes. Nice. Yes. I'm excited. I'm excited too. And then once you have your pieces ironed, um, you don't have to worry about them. Um, is this a custom order or no? Uh, no will it fit me? Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, once your pieces are ironed on, you can come back later and, and just um, even once you, let's say, once you, let's say if you're starting to iron your pieces onto the fabric and you, you have to run to the store or something, you could pull off the ribbon and the glue, you can see it's very shiny on the back of the ribbon there. It's shiny. You'll know that the glue, the the adhesive is already on there. So you oh, can, and then you it's can not. Work. Oh, it's not sticky. So right, it doesn't get sticky. sticky. You iron it. Right, right. Yeah. Iron so it. you can leave it set and come back to it later, and then it'll still be good to go. You can iron it down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we'll do the ironing process. I'll get the ribbons on to the skirt here, so this won't take long at all. I'll show you. Um, now this is a. I, I try to compartmentalize things where I try not to have to do, how to say, I try to, I do both front and back at the same time, yeah. one ribbon at a time. So um, so you once you get in that mode and, and yes. head space, it's just like. Yes, it's just a, like an art practice, an art, you yeah. know. Um, this just helps cut down on, it's a time saver. Um, I lay my pieces front and back, or, and it okay. doesn't matter which, yeah. I, I don't mark so like it. when you're done with one you kind of flip yes it, flip it over yes. up a bit and then the next one yes exactly so when ironing the ribbon on though i do want you to remember um the big note of using your quilting ruler to put your first ribbon down oh okay so they're yeah. not like me i always have a lopsided eye or something even when i draw i like tend to go down yes it's very it's very easy to to mess up that way Quilting ruler, I love because you can see the, the grid lines through the fabric. Once you lay it on the fabric, you can still see that grid mm -hmm. line. So um, this ensures a straight line from side to side. Um, I just love the ability to measure um, the distance from the, I, I use this to just, like I set it down. To show the, the fabric part? To where I just for a full stack to okay. where to, to where to start that first row. Okay. I just use the, the this for the width. So what would be like for those who are just now learning in the full stack? How far from the bottom up is a good number? And it's I, this one is six inches from the bottom, okay. but it's totally up to the person. Okay. Like it's like if they want to start like, but you always leave a little bit for the seam allowance at the bottom. Or yes. No? Oh. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, also, for the bottom, we are using seam binding, a satin, um, what do they do with it? It's a, uh, it comes in a package pre, oh yeah, here we are. Um, for this skirt, we're going to use um, satin blanket binding. It comes, uh, I get this at Walmart or even Hobby Lobby, satin blanket binding. Um, it's a beautiful, um, just a finishing touch. I sew this along the very bottom and it helps um, cover the seam and that it can take multiple washings. Um, it's just a very good, thick, very thick and durable finish to the bottom of the skirt. Mm -hmm. So it adds a lot of color, but it's also just um, to cover that bottom hem. And then if they can't get this, can you just use regular um, like bias? Oh, yes, tape? yes. You could use bias tape. You could also just hem it, oh, you know, okay. fold it under one inch, two inch, and then sew it to whichever is easier for you. Um, I like blanket binding because you just fold it and go okay. uh, it's just faster than hemming for me anyway but to each his own yeah mm -hmm. so that um six inches i just set the ruler down find the center the center fold of the fabric line up my ruler and then we're going to put the first color which is black 
And then we're gonna lay out our ribbon from side to side. And once you get this first ribbon down, the rest is just a breeze because it's just one on top of the other, just all the way. And if you have to, if you don't have a quilting ruler, you could also take a regular ruler and just pencil the line across and then line up your ribbon and do it that way if you don't have a quilting ruler. Right. I, I've had to do that before too. Or a meter stick. Oh, yes, yes, a yardstick. Yes, a yes. Wood. Yes, I've had to use an actual <laughs> ruler and just go, yeah. But whatever you have on hand, um, just, you know, it, it, it just helps uh, keep it looking crisper just more professional when it's straight across. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then we're gonna adjust, move our quilting um, ruler up there and then we're gonna iron it on. I have, Yeah, right. you can do it. I'm a master ironer. When I was um, pregnant with my daughter Talon, she's 25 now, mm -hmm. I was a struggling college student and um, I was such a good ironer. I, that was my little side hustle when I went back home. Yeah. Um, these ranchers, they would pay me to iron two bucks a shirt. Oh, awesome. My Uncle Dave Belandra was my biggest customer. He dropped awesome. extra starch, I remember him. And that was 25 years ago. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's cool. But I like to iron too. Yeah, it's just the little skills that really make the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, good job. Look Excellent. at how nice yes. that looks. And it stays wow. in place. It doesn't move. It won't fall off. You don't. You can um, iron all your ribbons and then come back and sew it later. Mm -hmm. um, it won't. They, it's not going to fall off or come up. You know, move out of place. Um, and then I like to do the bottom layer. So I flip this first. Oh, panel. so you're you're going kind of back yes, and forth. Yes, I do back okay. and forth, and that way it's just time wise. I feel for me, it's just. Um, so I'll let you do that and I'll just ask you questions and you just sure. keep talking. I feel like I'm in the way because you have your process and mm -hmm. you have oh, wow. the paper just pulls or the, the ribbon pulls right off. It's very quick and easy. Oh, and I forgot to say when I introduced Trisha, she made her art into a small business. You want to tell the viewers um, what your small business name is? Yes, um, I actually ventured out. Um, I've been making ribbon skirts for a couple of years now. and. Um, just with the ability, just people asking me to make them ribbon skirts and through my, um, my dad was a vendor at Pow Wow's. My dad, he sold, um, he did uh, loom beadwork. Oh, really? Yes, beautiful wrist watch bands, mm -hmm. bracelets, belts, headbands. Um, he did amazing loom work and was a vendor. So when we were young, we would have to help him pack the car and we'd go to Pow Wow's, we would dance and he would be the vendor. Um, so that through that, some of that, that gave me the courage to actually um, step up and become a vendor myself mm -hmm. so that um, I'll stockpile ribbon skirts and my first big venture, or actually I started a business this past fall called Dakota Damsel Creations. Um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I don't keep up very well with the I'm like that with my artist page too. It's a lot. It is. It is, it is with the with the social media aspect of yeah. it. Yeah, I'm not so tech savvy like my son is, but yeah. Um, you could go to the camp, Dakota Damsel Creations, and place an order or message me for an order. Um, but um, my first big venture was the Black Hills Powwow this mm -hmm. past year. The Hey Sapa Wa Chiki Ne Oshkate. Uh, I it was a three day event. Uh, I couldn't keep up. I had planned on sewing 17 skirts and I only got about 10 done um I was working full-time as well plus a single parent but um I made I sold all my skirts that in that three days she even had to you brought your yes. sewing machine yes yeah. I had my sewing machine with me at the table um I was sewing on the fly it was just fun it for me vending and just me, talking to people talking about the art of creating um, ribbon skirts or sewing is just so I just love it it's my whole element um, oh my god we're gonna have to do a project together yes okay yes we, we, we can we're, book, we're yes. gonna find the time we'll do show me what color well remember we were gonna do it with that Louis Vuitton oh yeah material but yes yeah, that I know that went faster than hot cakes yeah but one of these days I I'm so busy with my job and my art too and it's like I'm so busy with my job that I love and it's like oh how am I gonna find time to do my art right you know it just but I have to do my art to keep time 
Yes, to keep your mind, mind, you know. Yes. Um, this all of this um compartmentalization, I call it, just because it's using your mind to um bring to fruition your design. All of this mm -hmm. is very mentally healing. It's very mentally satisfying, just the ability to picture something in your mind and, and being able to make it. It's so it gives you the boost of just, you know, you can do it. So we have a viewer that um, Delena Ray uses knife says she mm -hmm. loves your work. Oh, she's one of my best customers. Hi, Del. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for logging on and joining us. Yes. Um, because I know. So to have you throughout the years when you're going through like really difficult times, like me, I know when I lost my grandmother. Um, I lost my grandmother to the pandemic. But she was always my biggest cheerleader and my hero and the, with especially with my artwork, you know, when I make some, I used to do quill work. Now I switched to beadwork, but when I make some and show her, it was just like, you know, she just would cheer me on. But with her death, I, I you know, my, I was going through it, but I made probably the best art that I did, mm -hmm. you know, just from, from that difficult time. But yeah. I made probably my best work, you know, really sparked my creativity and things like that. Do you find that with sewing sometimes if you're going through oh, something yes. really hard and you sit down and you sew the things you create? Yeah. I don't do commission orders though either because I feel like if I have a deadline and I'm real people can be very sensitive about yeah. my artwork. I'm sure all artists are, you know, like I I love my art. And if someone criticizes it or anything like that, it's like messes with my head too oh growing up that was a big thing for me when I was a teenager um I always wanted to have the best you know the biggest uh like the other fancy shawl dancers would have just these beautiful regalias and and my mom and dad couldn't afford it so I had to learn how to sell it on mm -hmm. my own and um but you know it's just mentally for me it's just I grew up being very bullied and just um you know grew, grew up in in California where you know, people thought we were Hispanic, um, mm -hmm. you know, we had to really find our niche, which luckily there was a big um, Native American community out in California. But um, the biggest thing was that I had to come to the realization that you're not going to satisfy everybody. Yeah. You know, people are always going to say something negative, whether it's just, and it doesn't have anything to do with you as an artist. It's just a reflection of them. Maybe they're yeah. going through something and and you know they're just um deflecting it onto you or um so don't let that ruin your peace you know stay in focus you know stay focused with just you know you what you can do that you are successful um whether it's beating whether it's drawing whether it's you know uh, making slime even I, try, I i i say there's a youtuber um uh i can't remember i think it's jelly brain slime that has followers like in the thousands you know, what, yes, just slime. And I love it because it's like ASMR too, which is mentally <laughs> better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but, it is. but I try to, I, I try to motivate students to find their niche, to find whatever it is they like to do in this life, whether it's drawing, pottery, clay, mm -hmm. um, uh, origami, whatever it is they like to do to really harness their, their energy and power into uh, becoming a master at it. And that way, um, it, it'll, you know, turn it into a business, yeah. you know, make a YouTube. I mean, social media now is our biggest champion for everything, you know. Um, I'm into also um, budgeting. Yep. There's budgeting. Oh, you videos. got me onto that girl. Yeah. I watch her videos. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, budgeting, into, um, YouTube budgeters. Um, so as you can see now, I'm just stacking the ribbon. Oh, that looks so pretty. The colors together. And we're just going to do this all the way to the top till we get all our ribbons on. And then we're going to start sewing the, the ribbons on. How much time do we have? We're okay. Um, yeah. What time is it? 11. Well, we got like 50 minutes. What can you do? Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Even if we just do a few colors. Oh, we did. I, I thought this one was it scheduled for two hours or one? Oh, two. Two. That's what I thought. Okay. So it was two. So you got 50 minutes. Oh, 50 minutes. If we okay. go a little over, I'm sure people don't mind. I oh, okay. Okay, yes. yes. Right? I, this is perfect. Yeah. Um, and the sewing part is the fastest for me because I, I love to do it. 
I could sit down and I was at the machine. Wow. Um, and, and so it, in the two hours flies by for me, it's a blink of an eye. Yeah. You know, I just, right. it's so when satisfying. I, yes. You're just into it. In the zone, I call mm -hmm. it. Yes. Once you find your niche of what you like to do and, and you craft your, you, you perfect your craft, it's really satisfying. Uh, and, it, and you'll see it because people will start to notice your work. Um, yeah. I have a, a big following here in Rapid City and I'm so thankful for all my customers. Shout out to all my customers. <laughs> <laughs> But no, um, I just, I, sewing is just, if people really knew, I feel like if people really knew how positive it is to work with our hands, yeah. um, a, a long time ago, our ancestors, you know, they would, they would scrape those hides, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a tedious thing in itself. That takes days, you know, to dry out the hide and then scrape all the, the, the stuff off, you know, it's just oh, making drums, whether it's making, you know, hand game sets, um, Oh, that's going to be my next thing. I found these, not to interrupt, but yeah, I want to do a, a hand game set. Oh, and I found these short dowels. I think, I want to say it was at Walmart. Yeah. They're dowels that were already pre-cut and sanded and, you know. Oh my gosh, beautiful. I'm going to try it out. Yes, do it, do it. Hand games are very, um, have made a resurgence too. Well, all my Montana, yeah, that's true. You live in Montana now, so they've always been there. Yeah. You forget I had, I, I forget. hand games. Yes, I that's had a true. team. We that's were, true yes we started out just ushikon then um the lonan student <gasps> lonan um students their hand games taught my little hand game team how to sing oh how to gosh. sing just the songs and the, the first, first song they learned was um the widow song the original hand games yeah the widow uh, little yeah, bigger, yeah yes. about, um and they picked that up and it, they just learned it, it you yeah. know so i'm so thankful way 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 back then the the Little lone men singers taught my little group how to sing. And I I think Connor Rubidu, she'll be doing um February 22nd, she'll be doing a little show on hand games and plum games, um, okay. the women's plum games too. Awesome. So stay tuned for that. Yay. But yeah. Yes. This is just so Trisha brought up I I moved to Montana now and that there hand games are a big thing too so yes you right in the thick of it I, you're yeah. so lucky to live in Montana. i mean montana is beautiful this the, the scenery and whatnot but just the the cultural oh, yeah. hand games round dances how i mean you know um we have a hey sapa of course which we do all those things too but i just feel like montana is the place being mm -hmm. like, you know, true, but and not because of Yellowstone. Hey, I know, <laughs> not because of Rip. I haven't yet, yet to see, see John Dutton. Oh I haven't ran into him yet. Yeah, we're big Yellowstone fans. Yes, we <laughs> are. We are big Yellowstone fans. Now they have the show 1923. Oh, I'm this behind. Oh, no yeah. spoilers. Okay, I'm no behind thing. ever since I moved up there. Yes. I haven't had a chance to settle and watch TV. Yes, yes. My plan is to make it in time for the Rihanna. Put the time. Oh, Football yeah. concert. Oh, today's a Super Bowl Sunday. That's right. Thank goodness. I want to. I'm not for really. I'm, I don't know. My team's not in there, so I'm all right. But yeah, I'm just. I'm just the Rihanna fan. Rihanna fan. Yes. So as you can see, I'm just ironing all the colors on, one at a time. Hey, this is gonna be so pretty. Yes, and I love variety in color. Um, the fifty yard spools I get are from um either Etsy or I have a place in LA that I order from too now. But um, so they're more economically, of, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can buy more spools for a better price. But um, I just love color. Color it speaks to speaks to me. Um, you know, I think I grew up with strawberry shortcake and rainbow bright. And I just everything color is very um, visually satisfying or stimulating to mm -hmm. me. Uh, so the more colors, the better. And my mom, my mom, rest her soul. Um, my mom would always be so mad at me because whenever I would do my regalia and come up with designs or colors, she'd be like, why, why do you have so much of this? You know, mm -hmm. you have everything but the kitchen sink, you know, and, and I just tell her, but mom, what if I have to wear this shawl or this dress, you know? And so that's why I think part of it is why I like so much color too, um, just because of the options, you know, mm -hmm. so we as females always got to have options when it comes to uh, clothing. Right. Okay. So I'm just going down the line. 
lining them up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If there's a little bit of a gap between your ribbon, it's not gonna make any big difference. Once you stitch it together, it's not like anyone's gonna have a magnifying glass and be, you know, checking every single seam or, you know, well. I like that with my artwork, like if I see a mistake that I made, it's over. I have to rip it all out. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not like, I, well, I used to be like that. I did. I really used to be like that until the day came where, you know, you as, a, when you become a, an artist and you just, you know, like I said, you come to realize that there's always going to be somebody that's going to have something negative to say about your work, whether it's, you know, mm -hmm. you use too many colors, you don't do this, you don't do that. Um, and, and for me, that was a big thing that helped my mental health too, is learning that that aspect of there's always going to be somebody yeah. with something negative to say, um, push past it, mm -hmm. keep going, you know. Well, I used to, when I was younger, I used to, I don't know, try to understand that. And then when I mentored under Earl Bullhead, he brought up how, you know, like our ancestors, life was about balance and, and why we chose on each to them was understanding that life about balance, how the good, if the, if the oh, good, yes, if yes. there's too much good and not enough yes. ne negativity, then the balance is off scale. Right. So sure. if, for everything good that you do, there is gonna, every yes. positive that you do, there is gonna be negative because that balance has to be there. True, and true. It's just like, what? Yes. Oh, I yes. get it now, you know, I get it. Yes. And I, oh, I talked to Mr. Bullhead. Um, yep, we Facebook message, but um, he goes through so, surgery tomorrow. So all of you who know Earl Bullhead, say a little prayer for him. He's got to go through surgery next or tomorrow. Yep. 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 I just saw him at the uh, Laporta Consortium mm -hmm. or, the, or um, the conference or Alan I too, I think it was, but. Oh, he, our mentor, yes. Yeah, he agreed to be our last presenter. He'll be wrapping up the winter camp series. Yeah, so all of our viewers out there kind of keep a watch out for that. That's a sneak peek. Earl Bell, yep. Earl Wing Bullhead, yes. Just an amazing Lakota speaker, song maker, drumstick maker. Oh my gosh, he's amazing. He's he's um one of my biggest mentors yep. from Lower Brule, when I uh, lived in Lower Brule and he worked at the college. He was so just look, teaching us the Lakota language was just mm -hmm. oh, I love his method. Yeah, conjugation. Yes, it kind of helps you understand the language. To me, you know, yes. not being a um, uh, it wasn't my first language, but I learned so much from him too. I'm just gonna iron this last ribbon on, and then we'll start sewing. Okay, just so we can get through the. Day. Well, well, I don't have to sew. I'm just gonna watch you, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No challenge. Don't just, scare me. I know. I mean, I can, but and I know for for sewers, their their machine is their baby. Yes, you definitely. Know? My um, aunties tell me that. My aunties are good quilters too. Yes, it's very important to upkeep the maintenance on your machine. You're gonna want to take out the bobbin and um clean on it. yeah clean it, but clean underneath the plate. Lift up your face plate. Take the screws out and uh, pull out your bobbin in case and actually get a q-tip and clean back there because the fuzzies let me tell you they can interfere they really can mess mm -hmm. up um your sewing uh, believe it or not once that's cleaned out it sews you know you're back in business so um take care of your machine it's very important and it doesn't have to be a fancy machine right no um, yes any it, it just a basic yes one. as long as it can even if it sews just straight if you want to do a straight stitch across each of your ribbons um you can do that as well um i think in the 90s it kind of became um popular um i used to live in california so uh, bright colors started coming in like the neons and the fancier stitches um like the embroidery stitches and mm -hmm. you know diamonds they do half circles they do little wavy lines um but i feel like it just all contributes to our um technique and our, our sewing ability to um utilize what we're given um that's one of our strengths as um, indigenous people um even though we were forced onto reservations and uh we were you know our ceremonies and things were taken away that's one of our best um uh fortitudes fortitude uh one of our best fortitudes was probably the ability to uh hang on to uh the smallest thing and and keep it tucked away for later or to keep it carried with us through uh, the years 
and that that way it could be kept for future generations. Um, I think that's one of our biggest strengths, just being able to, um, whether it's um, reinventing ourselves, whether it's, um, you know, um, adding something from a little of this or a little of that, um, adding it on. Um, I think I forgot my scissors, regular scissors. Fuck. You're throwing scissors? That's okay. I can use my rotary cutter. Will you bring my mat back over here? Um, I have this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll do seven today just for time's sake. Um, is that okay? Yeah. Um, time's sake, because I think if I did the whole full stack, we might need to another hour. Oh, so with another the sewing hour. And yeah, stuff. with the sewing and stuff. So, um, so now that we have the ribbons on, my next step to flip is to flip over the, the fabric to the backside, and you'll see kind of like these tails on the edge. I always like to cut them off just because for me, they're a little distracting, number one, but number two, uh, the edges spray a little bit. So I just cut them off and that way we don't have to, uh, they're out of the way, we don't have to worry about them. So, Another inside tip. Yes, so you just realign your ruler and then I trim off the end there, see? And that way it's just, for me, I actually that's probably one of my, uh, my little, uh, I had to say my little mental um, notes that I have to do because for me, for me to see any type of excess or it's very mind boggling to me. I have to have things clean and kind of just in order, you know. So, um, but that you don't have to, but I do that. It's your just, preference. Yes, it's my preference. Just, just for uh, mental clarity for myself. Um, I struggled with mental health when I was young. Um, but that sewing really helped me um, by utilizing all these tools and, you know, the ability to be organized when it comes to sewing or uh, beading uh, has really helped me to regain focus on my mental health, um, to have that um, ability to go seek treatment when needed. Um, it's helped me to um, just so, you know, even like a schedule, a daily schedule, having that daily schedule, or, um, you know, just processing things in a way that is good for you, you know, the individual, um, that can be such a big help as well. Yeah, okay. so we're just going to trim off the, the little side pieces. Yeah. So did anybody teach you how to do this? Um, art or this art medium or did you teach yourself did you just um or so, somebody kind of guide you well the way i learned was um one of my longtime friends um nancy mendoza who uh shawnee from oklahoma she actually gifted me my first little um powwow skirt um mm -hmm. she actually gave me the tip and said all it is it's like sewing a pillowcase Mm -hmm. because it's a rectangle you know and then you have the waist at the top and so then when I was young I would make my own skirts at for powwow dancing mm -hmm. and then we would add applique and different things like that but when the ribbon skirt style came back um made a resurgence I really watched kind of watched YouTube but already having the skill of regalia making yeah. really contributed to my ability to wear to, to get me to where I am now where I just adjust and adapt. Yes, adjust and adapt. Um, resiliency, you know, being being able to um, take what I already know and and use it for something else. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's part of one of our big skills too. So I'm just cutting off the edges here. People might say, "Oh, ribbon skirt making is too time consuming. I can't do it." Um, it it really is just about. Um, taking those little steps to ensure a better harmonious outcome, a better harmonious outcome. So that I also, also like ribbon skirt making to everyday life. Mm -hmm. You know, if you take care of the little things, the big things won't be as, as overwhelming. Yes, yes. Okay, so now we have our um, ribbons on the skirt here toward it the looks bottom. so pretty. Yeah, I love these colors. And just for time's sake, we're just gonna start sewing. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'll assemble the skirt just with this. Otherwise, the full skirt, the stack might take longer. Um, but we're done with the iron. So I'm going to move this in here. Okay. 
Let's see, we're gonna move some of this over here now. Okay. And we're going to go and but you want to, you need a sip of your refreshment? Oh, yes, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I won't hold it up, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. Keep, keep so, oh, do you my... use pins when you sort, or just from experience, you don't have to use pins? Um, I, I do use pins. Um, pins are one of our best tools as seamstresses. Mm -hmm. um, I love the magnetic, the magnetic base, and then you have all your pins. Uh, because mine, I'm, I'm, I'm in a hurry. If I'm in a hurry, my pins will fall everywhere, and then the magnet just. <gasps> Nice. Picks it up and goes, so it's much easier. Um, it's just whatever preference you, you use. Um, this skirt is actually not going to have, um, they call them tabs or mm -hmm. the side fringes, um, but it it's not very hard to do. Um, a tab is just the fringe. I cut a piece at, each ribbon is 12 inches long for a tab. You fold that tab into half, and then you're gonna you would pin it to the inside all the way down, and then sew your top piece on top. And then when you open it, it's the tab or the fringes hanging. So um, that's not very very hard as well. Um, but for time's sake, we'll just do one without tab today. So um, let me get my thread. Um, just some tips too that I do. I use multicolor thread when sewing. It's a thread made. It's called variegated thread, where it's shades of whatever color. Um, it's just very time saving so that you could go through and I could use black, I could use brown, I could use bronze, I could use a maroon thread, but I would have to switch it out every single time when I get to that new ribbon. So the the, the color, different colored thread helps cut down on that time, time wise. So it is a time saver for me. Um, and you can find these threads like at a fabric store. Yes, they're at Hobby Lobby, um, Walmart. Oh no, Hobby Lobby. Um, Hobby Lobby, I love theirs. Oh, the sewing center is where I get my um variegated threads. They're a little bit pricier, ten dollars a spool, but sometimes you can find sales and whatnot too, which helps. And then don't forget the sewer's aid. This uh I get at the sewing center here in town in Rapid City. Uh, it's probably four or five dollars a bottle mm -hmm. but a bottle will last you months because you don't need very much you just use a little bit on your needle every now and then so um here's our pins the pins i would use only if it was uh only when it comes to adding the tabs mm -hmm. onto the you know putting the, yeah. the the inside tab to, together otherwise i can just stitch it and eyeball it and I've gotten kind of skilled. Oh my God, you guys will get a witness how fast she sews. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. Sewing, I like. I, I cannot stress enough how much piece sewing is my piece. I always say sewing is my ability to just. It puts me in the zone of not thinking about anything um, other than the placement of the thread and along the ribbon. Sewing really help has helped my mental health in that it's um, helped me to see that the big problems are really not so big after all, uh, because I am able to take a piece of fabric with just a little bit of ribbon and create something that is highly sought after in our Indian country today. And that's just so much worth so much more than anyone could know. And uh, I'm just very thankful to have the ability to sew. And that's why I gift a lot of my items as well. Um, oh. Um, I love to to gift my ribbon skirts. Um, sewing is just a, a gift that has to be shared, and I feel it's, it should be shared. And it's a tool that our future generations can use to keep themselves going as well. Okay, so for the thread, um, this thread isn't. I couldn't find my rainbow thread. So, um, just for for uh time's sake we're just going to pretend this is rainbow thread it's really kind of shades of purpley but um i need to get more rainbow thread from the sewing shop um but for time's sake and it's not gonna you're not gonna notice it it's not gonna be that big of a difference but if you do want to match every single thread to your color ribbon you are you can do that it's totally a preferential you know up to the the, the maker um the designer yes the design the creator yes yeah. the creator um, yeah the seamstress 
So we're just threading our needle now. And I'm lifting up the foot here. I have a bobbin. The bobbin. Um, but it doesn't matter at all because it's the back of the skirt. You're not going to see it at all. Um, the bottom thread, I generally just use white because uh, it's the cheapest color, yeah. you know, cheap for economic purposes, white. And that way um, it doesn't confuse me with whatever top color I'm using. I just know the bottom's always going to be white. Um, but you could, of course, wind your bobbins to whatever colors to match. It's totally up to the to the maker um, themselves. So for the stitch that I use when I sew my ribbons down, I use a zigzag stitch. So as you can see, each ribbon is, is right next to each other, butted up side by side with no gap. So that when I sew my um, ribbon skirts, I use the zigzag stitch to connect the two. So I overlap the zigzag one on one on each side of the ribbon to make sure that um, they, they're they're sewed so down, so that it actually kind of like kill two birds with one stone. Because yeah. if you used a, a single stitch, you would do one here and then one on the top, so you would do bottom and top. Whereas with the zigzag, you just do bottom, middle, 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 all the way down until you get back to this, and it's just much. It's a time saver for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and the stitch that I use is a medium zigzag. Some people use large, um, some people use a really super tiny zigzag, which, which is okay. But I use the medium because it's able to lie on both sides of enough uh, of the ribbon to where you know it's not going to, you know, um, bunch up when you wash mm -hmm. it or it's going to keep it, keep the shape nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. Yes. Love yes. Inside too. Yes. So I, I just sewing, I just tips and tricks I've learned over the years. Like I said, I've been sewing for years since I was young. Uh, my grandmother, Mary Mason, used to sew all of our bedding. She would really? quilt our bed spreads. She would make us little um, sundresses for school. Um, I just need to rest her soul. But um, she's the one that really helped kind of, you know, get my, spark my curiosity about sewing because she was able to take a piece of fabric and make it into a whole dress for us. And I was like, wow, Grandma, how'd you do that? And now, you know, Ruth, we can make our own. Grandmas are the best. Yes, the best. definitely. So, zigzag stitch. My stitch length sits between a two and a three, closer to the three. And then the length is also a three. So we're just going to put our ribbon under there. And I'm going to put a little bit of sewer's aid on the needle now. And it doesn't stain. It dries clear. It doesn't stain, leave a residue um, on anything. Um, it just helps keep the, the glue from the heat and bond off the needle. So here we go. Um, I hope it's not too late. I mean, yeah. And then you always want to backstitch. So when you sew, you're going to want to follow the bottom of the ribbon. Oh, this is good to show them. The, colors, the color difference is good to show them. They can see the stitch. So that the, the stitch sits right along the edge of the fabric. Now, when I do the bottom one, I don't do half and half onto the fabric just because when you wash it, we don't want it to pucker up so that we want it to be firm and rigid so we keep it just on the bottom ribbon. So I do that for the bottom and the top ribbons. But on the middle ones, I sew across on the middle line, which you'll see momentarily. Um, it does take skill. Um, don't, don't worry about if you accidentally go a little bit off. It, it'll be fine. Um, You just want to, this is so relaxing for me because the machine does all the work. It really does. You just, I hold the, 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 the panel here, this hand, and then I guide it just loosely, very loosely. Let the machine do all the work. And then you're going to want to put a little bit more silver aid. You, and you'll be able to see the little white uh, pieces. It looks almost like a clear putty. Uh, you'll see it on the back of your needle. From the um, heat and bond? Yes, from the heat and bond. And like I said, you just put some of this sewer's aid and it'll come right off. And that way your needle uh, won't get stuck. Or it won't be stuck. You're going to want to backstitch when you get to the end of your ribbon. And then you just go and flip your thread. And there's row one.
There's the first bottom piece. And you're gonna do this all the way across your across your ribbons. So we'll go. You're gonna to wanna to start slow if you're a beginner. Just go forward a few stitches and back stitch. Me, I'm one of my relatives used to say, so like the wind. So I try to go as fast as I can. I mean, I don't try to go, it's just that happens. It's like second nature, you know. Something that sewing really is a skill that not everybody can do, but but the cost of materials is rising. Um, so that this one I think everything is even yes. How it slides oh, yeah, it yeah. slides on half and on one side and then across the other half. So and if it doesn't have to be perfect, if it's not, you know, if if it's more on one side than the other. It's going to be okay because the heat and bond keeps it down too. But um, I just try to do my best on getting it half and half mm -hmm. all the way down. And then you do this all the way, all the way across. And I've been sewing for years. So don't think you have to get to this level overnight or, you know, it, it takes, it took me years. I've been sewing since I was 13. And this is the time I put on like Palo music yeah. or Palo videos on the TV and I just listen to them. Um, my favorite singers to listen to, um, Stony Park, um, Whitefish Juniors. Oh, um, Whitefish Juniors. Yes, yes. Harvey Dreamer. Oh my gosh, he's amazing. Um, Blackstone. But use anything that helps you personally. You know, whether you like R and D or Adele or rock music. You know. I do feel that it all mentally goes together. Yeah. Like it works like clockwork. You know, if you have something um, auditory, it also helps you, your visual, you know? So I feel it goes, kind of goes hand in hand, mm -hmm. but it's whatever helps you. Personally. You just guide your fabric along, back stitch after every, every stitch. I'm going to cut it in the thread cutter. I'm going to do the next row. I should have had you tie me, darn it. Oh, I know. And set the time. I, I've set. seen Trisha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen Trisha make, measure, cut, make a ribbon shirt in like an hour and 15 minutes of so many. I was like, what? Yes, and then we drove it out too, didn't we? That yeah. was so fun. Uh, but pa and pattern making is just, uh, if you can think of sewing as a step, if you can compartmentalize it into step by step by step, that can help as well. Um, for me, when I make a ribbon shirt, I, I have the pattern, I lay it out onto the fabric, I cut every piece out first, then I um, put my designs or ribbons onto the shirt or whatever. And then the last thing I do is sew it all up. So it's kind of like a step-by-step -step process. I don't I don't go out of order. Yeah, like when you first start sewing, it would have taken you a lot longer than an hour. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky I grew up in Cali um, during when we really learned about more about powwows and um, we used to live in Saline, Michigan, and we would go to like Ann Arbor powwow years and years ago in, in the 80s. Um, but living in California, really, we were we grew up in the era of kind of the pan Indianism where um, uh, uh, fabrics, different fabrics were chosen when it went from gabardine, traditional gabardine and cotton to um, rayon and silks and satins and um, fancy sequin fabrics and things like that. Neon colors, like I had said. Um, and, and that's just part of the movement, I feel like, you know, nothing's gonna stay exactly the same. 
Um, although, you know, ceremonial wise, that's a different story. But yeah. um, I feel ceremonies, they do, of course, they wouldn't want to, you know, keep the tradition that makes us who we are. But in, in the powwow world, you yeah. know. Another little gun. Yesterday, I was watching the Seminole Florida Powwow on oh, um, powwows.com. Yes, there's so many um, awesome social media sites to um, keep our culture or for us to ourselves to in, in, immerse ourselves in our culture. Um, the Seminole, there was a, they, they're known for, uh, they live in the Everglades, uh, the Seminole. Um, but they have uh, the gator, the gator the show. Swamps. Yeah, the swamps. Yeah, so they had a gator, a guy on there during dinner break. He did the halftime or like the, the dinner break show. Um, he freaking um, sat on top of an actual gator and he was able to, like he would put his hand in the mouth and everything. Like it, he was amazing. But um, just so many cultures. So whatever culture or tribe you're from, do research, you know, seek out your get information about culture you know I feel like being uh Dakota we have such a rich um lineal um heritage that you know we just need to research research it even if we don't have a grandma to tell us even if we don't have a relative to tell us go to the library go online research it you know Um, I'm a big fan of books, so that's also that's also what helped me with my song was reading books on it too, um, different song techniques and styles. And now I love like Project Runway. I love all those um, right. competition shows. Um, I feel like we should do one for oh, you. Like do like an indigenous, yeah, indigenous one. Yeah. I'll send you after if you guys have ideas, Trish and I will have. Yes, yes, we need to. I'll be the Tim Gunn. Uh, <laughs> I'll be the Heidi Klum. Oh, no, hey. dude, I, I'd be the Heidi Klum, and you'd have to be the Tim Gunn, because you're the one that knows the... Oh, yeah. Remember Tim Gunn is the one oh, who yes. knows the, the ins and outs? Yes. Of the, of he was the teacher. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Have a mini challenge? Yes, definitely, yes. Once you learn to sew, you can make anything. Uh, you can make um, even cedar bags for ceremonies. You can make, uh, I do, I even made my sis, I, well, I need to make her. Those uh, Walmart holder bags, those little uh, fabric. She loves, we love tiny yeah. ones, so, um, but I do need to finish that for her. But uh, you can make anything. Once you learn the basics of stitching an item together, you know, just holding the two pieces of fabric together, there's a, a plethora of things you can make. You, you, you just, you know, I feel like once, once that's part of what's going to help keep you on your sewing path is learning all the different things you can make. Mm -hmm. I forgot scissors, but you know, you're sewing scissors. I know, I, I know that they're always well because I have to hide them now from my son. Oh, you know, <laughs> so they were in the drawer, of course, and I forgot them. But um, and my son just, I, I, I tell him, I try to remind him daily. Son, my don't use my sewing scissors, and he's sewing like, scissors. yeah, he's like, no, mom, it's just for cutting, you know, or it's just for this or that, or you know, and I'm like, no, no, no it's not. And so I know all my avid seamstresses, fellow seamstresses out there, can, um, you know, correlate with me. A lot of people do say that I should um, mass produce, you know, like make one skirt, but different sizes. And I just, I tell you, it's so hard for me to do that. I feel that when we get into kind of the roboticism or, you know, um, 
you know, it takes, like it takes yeah, it takes the fun out of it or the, yeah, the beauty out of it, I feel like. So a lot of my pieces are just individually made, created um, based on what the, the buyer chooses or whatever mood I'm in, you know, yeah. which is usually happy-go-lucky if anyone knows me. Um, I'm, I'll be 49 this year, but I've learned so much in this life um, just as far as just the gift of life it, itself is a gift to be treasured and cherished every single day. It's, and I didn't always realize, I didn't, I took it for granted. I, I'll admit, yeah. I didn't realize it until way later in life, you know. Yeah, the pandemic. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, definitely, yes. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, my presentation um, almost every time was affected some way, either directly or by it, you know? Yes, definitely. So sad. Oh, oh, yeah, that'll be fun. With me. You don't use that? Do you? No, I know. <laughs> well, I do, I do only in emergency. I mean, like uh, mm -hmm. on short time, like, you know, when I'm in, well, time is a factor. <laughs> But this is my time where I just zone out and put whatever's on the TV. Like, I don't watch. I have to just hear it because I'm so engrossed in watching my sewing. But I listen to, um, I'm into that show um, on uh, Amazon. Oh, no, it's on uh, Apple TV, uh, Truth Be Told. Oh, my gosh, with Poppy. She does a podcast. Uh, what's that actress's name? I can't think of it right now. But I'm on season two. So it's really good that I listen to it. I don't watch it. But, um, and the other thing is make sure your sewing machine is really on a stable base. Like your table, you want a good, strong, I have a big dining room table where I do all my creating, but um, these flimsy tables can be a little difficult because when the table moves, the machine moves and that can mess you up. So, that's why I go fast. And once you start to perfect your craft, your mind, you're it'll be automatic it'll start to be um almost remote like when you set your presser foot down onto the ribbon in your mind your mind's eye will already know the placement of where you need to be so it's just a, a, a time you know it, it's about putting in the time the work to to get to that level of um not perfection but you know um, artistry <laughs> Any look, look what happened right there. Oh, yes. Okay, let's show them. Yes, this is what I was waiting for. Yes. Okay, so um, you're going to get to a point where, as you can see here, the bobbin thread ran out. So the top thread is on there, but the bottom thread ran out. So that your, your stitches, your machine will go, but there, no, there will be no thread to interlock. It'll just be this thread. So I giggle because a lot of my seamstress friends are like, man, thought it was on a roll and they'll be all the way to the end and here it'll be all the way from the beginning the thread ran out so um we'll go and i'll show you how to do the bob and change the bobbin thread it's very easy oh thank you so much yes awesome okay yes be back in effect here so so now i'm going to take out the bobbin set it up here on the machine on this little bobbin threader and I always use, or generally I use white. Um, white helps you to see um, the difference between your top thread and bottom thread. So sometimes if your machine is messing up, you'll, you'll be able to easy, easily um, see the difference um, where, the, where the issue is. So if it's your bottom thread, you'll notice the, you can see the white thread on top. So that's when you know it's an issue with your bottom tension. Whereas if you see the top color on the bottom side, messing up then you'll know it's your top tension okay. is too tight so little um sewing tricks and things you learn along the way so we're just going to wind up our bobbin again here and i swear if somebody could invent a, a machine in within the sewing machine where you don't need the bobbin where somehow the top thread winds and if only it could be like the interlock machine mm -hmm. you know where it's all in one but um i haven't gotten to that stage yet but we're gonna wind our bobbin really quick 
And I just make sure more, I have to have it uh, either in space. So, I, and I know you don't have to hold it. Uh, it's just mentally, I've been doing it for years because I had a machine once that didn't move the, the, the thread the way it's supposed to. So um, I can't help but do it myself. Okay, there's our bobbin thread panel. We're going to pull it off. We're going to re-thread the bobbin here. You do that too fast. Oh, it's like second nature. It's like, you know, mentally, it's just there, you know. I've been doing it so often. That's half the battle itself sometimes, um, too, learning those just simple, small sewing techniques. We're going to re-thread the top thread here. So the top thread is the thread that you see on top of the ribbons. The bottom thread is the, the bobbin thread. So the little bobbin is the thread that uh, it sits inside the case on the machine. So if there's ever a sewing issue um, with your with your thread, um, using a white for the bobbin thread will generally help make your issue easier to see, to detect, mm -hmm. like I said. Um, most machines can be uh, cared for uh, through cleaning, oiling, maintenance. Um, and generally, once an issue happens, I generally like to take my time and actually get to the bottom of it. It doesn't take, but it's usually your tension somewhere the knobs or a stitch, the width or the length is a little off, um, but it can be resolved. Although if it's serious where your needle is stuck in the plate and won't move, so then, then you, you probably have to take it in. You just go back to where it is. Yes. Oh, yes. So, so would you backstitch there? Yes, too? we're going to backstitch. So I redid the thread and I'm going to trim this top thread because I don't want it to tangle in the new stitch. So we're going to lay our presser foot back on top of the old where we ended. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect where, you know, you don't have to pinpoint the exact stitch, but you're just going to stitch it forward a couple spaces and then back stitch a little and then you go back forward and keep going so it reinforces that seam the new seam over the old seam so you know it's um interlocked yeah. it doesn't come and go you don't have to worry about it okay here's one side do I have time to do the other side or should I disassemble it um, what are we at here? Oh, we're getting pretty close. It's eleven fifty-three. Oh, okay. So I'll start assembling. So for time's sake, we're going to. So you do that to the other side yes. too. You just sew exactly the same. So all our ribbons are stitched on, as you can see, and now you would do that to both sides. So generally, I do one side first, then I set this down and sew the other. So for time's sake, we're going to pretend that this is already sewn, just for time's sake. And so now I'm going to show you the assembly process, which for me is also step by step. So the first step we're going to do is sew the, the bottom on, the bottom binding on first. So that is our satin blanket binding. And if you don't have satin blanket binding, you can use regular bias tape, the thinner, the thinner kind. So one whole package would yes, be one, for one skirt. Yes, one package is plenty for one skirt. Um, and when I do the binding I always leave extra at the end just because you're gonna I cut it at, at a diagonal mm -hmm. um this sprays so I take a lighter and burn it so it doesn't fray too but um I just like it just for um, the look of it. yeah the look of it professional or finished look mm -hmm. so what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure it first and I just pull it all the way down and then I cut a little bit extra at the end and then you'll just cut two of them. So one, and you pull it up. Two. And it doesn't have to be super perfect because it the hem it folds in at the at the end. And that's extra. Okay, so we're gonna put this over here. Okay. Yeah. Can you put that over there for me? So it doesn't spin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna sew on the hem binding now. And then um, I just try to make sure all my threads are um, cut from the sides here. And then the placement of the binding, there's an open side. It's just like one big piece folded over, but you're gonna wanna look to see 
the bottom piece is generally bigger than the top. So there's a tiny little space in between. There's a tiny little gap. So that means the back is, this is the, the piece that hangs out more is the backside, the underside. And the shorter top is for the top so that it binds it together. Yes, so you know you you know you're so catching. There's nothing wrong. That's you know you're catching the underside. Yes, yes, that's the way it's supposed to be. So make sure the the wider bottom piece is on the bottom, and then you're just gonna lay it, lay your edge inside, and then fold it over. And I do leave at least oh about an inch, an inch from the edge. Um, I pinch it together, place it under the presser foot. And I zigzag this as well. That way it's still ensuring a good catch for both top and bottom. But this, you're gonna just push your the, the hem all the way into the binding until you feel it touch the bottom. And then you just hold it. I just hold it, you know. And then for like the less experienced sewer, they would pin it? Yes, you could pin it or you could do the heat and bond. Oh, okay. Or spray adhesive it on. Oh, okay. Yep. So, um, but I just hold it and, you know, you, I just sew it every like six inches and then have to realign it and whatnot. So, but yeah. Oops, I forgot to put it back. Just did a zigzag. Yep, now back stitch. Always back stitch. I forgot to put, um, I forgot to put the stuff on my needle. You'll notice if it starts gumming up your needle, your uh, your needle will start, your stitching will start to mess up. So that's when you know you either need to replace your needle altogether, which can make a big difference, or you just put more sewer's aid. And you'll know just because if your stitches keep messing up, um, then it's time you, to replace your you could replace, it could be time to replace your needle. I have to change mine frequently because of all the sewing of the stitching I do. But there's just that's just tricks you learn over the years and whatnot too. Um, there are awesome YouTube tutorials on ribbon skirt making as well. Um, there's a company, um, Four Generations. She's I think it's she's based out of Canada. Uh, Four Generations, how well I think or something. She does a wonderful um, ribbon skirt tutorial as well. Um, but just uh, there's so many ribbon skirt tutorials out there. My favorite seamstress is that sew ribbon skirts have to be Barney Meaches. She does the uh, awesome zigzag. She's the one that kind of started, or does awesome zigzag. Um, I love the, um, she didn't, uh, Chi Chief Crafts, Danette Chi, uh, uh, the, Jerry Woody and Darling, they're just the ones that really inspired me to keep sewing and Mona Soldier Boy growing up in California. Um, they were just really the pioneers of, of regalia and sewing make, or sewing and regalia making back then. And they still sew beautiful creation. Um, Danette has her own business now, Chi Chi Craft. Um, she does fabulous ribbon skirts as well. But um, there's so many different ways to put the ribbons. You don't have to just do straight across. You can do patchwork, you can do zigzag. Um, my latest one was um, kind of like a crisscross weaving. I was trying to do a heart, but then the, the top part, I cut some and then I was like, oh shoot. So I had to realign it and I just left it. But um, there's just so many different um, styles and it, it, it's really good to try and find your own your own way of doing it too. Because that, for you. Yeah, because that helps you remember it better too. Well, yeah. well, it's just the bouncing of the table. I have to go slow. So I'm just um, making sure the the bottom is touching that inner part of the binding. And it becomes second nature. You'll be able to feel it in your grip, um, the binding and the, 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 the hem inside the binding. So you'll know it's secure. Then you just keep stitching along. And then I always cut my binding on the, on the angle. 
on the diagonal so that I burn it and that it just gives it a cleaner finish, finished look. So the binding is on there. And then also they do things now where you can add rickrack trim. Some people uh, sometimes I'll sew a piece of gold or whatever color to match rickrack right on top, just to kind of cover that bottom thread and add a little bit of embellishment. Um, it's totally your preference up to you. Um, us natives, we like to be bougie. So rickrack adds a really, really beautiful um, element, just a, an embellishment to dress it up and make it look fancier. So um, this is one side and now I'll sew the other side on the bottom, the binding to the bottom. And then we'll start the assembly. We'll put it together. So we're going to realign the, 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 the inside into the hem, the hem tape here. Leave about an inch from the bottom. There's about an inch hanging off there. And then I press it under the foot. And don't forget to backstitch. Backstitching is very, you only backstitch at the beginning and at the end, just to reinforce your stitching to make sure it's secure. To the cross. It's a skill, just to be, <laughs> you learn it, you really it's do learn it. Yeah, I mean, you learn it as you go, the feel, for, the well, feel of the fabric. Yeah, that the just goes with every, um, yeah. Right, right, yes. It's just that uh, knowledge, that mm -hmm. inner, it's almost like a, once you do it so many times, it just becomes remote or, you know, like, yeah. And you can get there. You will get there. Just repetition, doing it over and over. Okay, and we're gonna turn this. Okay, and now we're gonna work on the top part for the elastic. The hem is done. The bottom. This is the look. I love the black detail. It just adds to the leopard print. Makes it just more, gives it more of a finished look. So now we're gonna um, do the hem for the elastic at the top. And this one I would do pockets, but may not have time for that, which is okay. They have awesome tutorials um, on YouTube as well. Um, I may even do one later too, yes. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay. So now I'm going to use a straight stitch. Zigzagging, uh, for the most part, is done. Um, the only time I'll do another zigzag is when I, after I put the two pieces together, um, within that quarter inch, there's a quarter inch, I zigzag over or uh, just before the, the, the straight stitch to re double reinforce the seam. So that way it just ensures it's not going to go anywhere. So this first fold down is gonna be a quarter of an inch, a quarter of an inch down where I fold it, where I fold it under. And I, uh, you don't have to be perfect. Um, this is the casing for the elastic. So uh, the closer the better, but it doesn't have to be perfect because um, the elastic's gonna be ruched or bunched up anyway. So you're not gonna see it. And this will be inside the, the hem. So you're not gonna see it either. This is just for double like reinforcement. So we're going to straight stitch this all the way across, back stitch, and then go, go, go. Back stitch at the end. And I'm a firm believer that every little um, motorized mechanism it has a spirit. So you have to talk to the machine, you know, baby your machine. Eh? But no, um, 
I do believe in, you know, my machine, I say, come on now, work with me, or, you know, um, you know, if you be good to your machine, it'll definitely always be good to you. So now we have the first hem. So now we're going to fold it down another, oh, I would say this is probably an inch and a half, two inches. Um, and I don't measure specifically. I just, you, um, my, oh yeah, my elastic, is it there? Yeah. You're just going to want to make sure that the fold over is wider than the elastic. So this is my elastic. So you're gonna wanna make sure that the, the width that you can tuck your elastic through there. And then some do the paper bag ruching method where you do it super like two inches and then that way you'll have room for your elastic, but you'll also stitch down this top part further closer to the elastic to create more of the paper bag effect at the waist where it's more uh, ruched. I'm a chubby girl, I can't do that. I, no, 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 you're fine, you're fine. But so we're gonna sew this, this will be the last part. Oh, and then the other thing is mathematically, what happens, so when we cut it on the A line, when you fold your casing down, you're gonna fold it straight down. And there's gonna be this little gap here. Like a 45 degree angle. Yeah, it's gonna be the angle um, we cut it on. So it's gonna leave this little gap. This is where you're gonna put your two pieces together and stitch in this ditch, I call it this little gap because then you'll still have room to put the elastic and then um at the very end you'll sew these two pieces together by hand okay. or that's what i do well I, yeah well, probably if i just i have to talk about stitching it oh okay okay that's probably the easy part yeah this is the easiest part straight stitch from now on so we'll just stitch it here back stitch All the way across. And then you're going to put your two pieces together. Let's see, this one was then. So then you're going to put your two pieces together. Line it up, and this is you could use pins. Um, I'll pin the bottoms here. Oh, normally I don't, but if there was tabs, then I would pin it. But you're gonna line up the bottom seams. Then we're gonna sew up each side, and that's gonna be the the so skirt. Then, yeah. then you're gonna just your hem's already there for your elastic. So the elastic measurement. So you don't want to have the elastic be. Like I'm a 44, so you don't want to cut your elastic 44. Because there has to be. Because there has to be yeah. a stretch. Yeah. So what I do is I always hold it around me and then just pull it out. Even if it's stretchier, that's okay. Yes. Like this skirt I have here, I just like it because I'm able to, you know, it's very giving. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of room. So like I gained a few pounds. So yeah. hey, you know, still fit, still fit. So yeah, even better. So um, but when measuring for the elastic, I do wrap it around me and then just pull you know out. pull it out. But you want to make sure I overlap. Now I there's there's um kind of debates on which is better. So I overlap my elastic when I sew the ends. I overlap it like this, which can create a little bit of bulk, but I only overlap it maybe two inches, an inch and a half, two inches here. But I stitch straight a box and then a crisscross to reinforce it. Or I just do zigzags all the way through, but it helps to reinforce the elastic because you don't want this to come undone. Yeah. Because then your skirt will be, will fall off, you know. But you don't then, want that. No, never, <laughs> never. So then once you have your skirt assembled, um, I use, uh, some people can use, um, what are those sticks, those long sticks called? But I use the safety pin. Put the safety pin through your elastic, and then you're just going to hold your other end of your elastic, let's say, and then you're just going to slide it through and pull it. So you're going to pull it all the way through. And then that way you're going to go through both sides, um, grab the other side, take out your pin, and then stitch the ends together and then voila your skirt will be done yay 
see. We'll have to have you back to show us the whole. Yes, definitely, but definitely. You do a lot in just two hours. Yeah, you know, like, they do like day week. Oh no, day. no, it's just it really is once you know getting in the flow of things, or you know, um, you know, just once you find your uh your zone, you know, yeah. Once you get in the zone, it goes like clockwork. Awesome. So you you want to leave us with any last words? Uh don't be don't worry about making mistakes. That's my biggest advice is sewing is a life skill that can teach you many things for your mental health, for your um, it can help with uh just breathing, you know, you uh everything. It can really help you with your mental health. Um, so don't be worried about being perfect, don't worry about making a mistake. Um generally things can be fixed up to where they can be hidden or you know sewing is one of those um skills or gifts that uh, we can use to to repair our holes and jeans and things like that so once you learn the art of just being able to put two pieces of fabric together uh those other tricks and tips will come naturally so but i just want to thank you both thank you so much for having me today it was a pleasure to to help and show you my techniques yeah, awesome. Yes. Well, thank you so much for showing us and yes. teaching us. I am on Facebook, social media, um, Trisha Withhorn on Facebook, and then Dakota Damsel Creations on Facebook and um, Instagram as well. So, all right. Thank you. thank you. Well, with that, thank you all for joining us, Racing Magpies Winter Camp Series. And um, yeah, we'll be back in a, after a short break with our next presentation with um, Hannah Rubidoux. Well, thank you. Thanks, Trish. Awesome. Thank you, Tally. Yep. Have a great day. Yep. Have a good Super Bowl Sunday. I'm not, my team's not in, so I don't <laughs> care who wins. I'm just there for the halftime entertainment. Yes, so, exactly. We've got to see Rihanna. Yep. I'm excited. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you.